Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a beautiful exponential equation from Romania. We have 4 to the power x plus 4 to the power 1 over x equals 18. And we're going to be solving for x values. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can approach this problem. I'm pretty sure some of you, maybe all of you, found some solutions already at this point. But here's what I'm going to do first. Set f of x equal to 4 to the x plus 4 to the power 1 over x. And then go ahead and differentiate this expression. We're going to be looking at the behavior of this function, whether it has a maxima or minima, so on and so forth. The first derivative gives us a lot of good information whether the function is increasing or decreasing on an interval. You know, uh, if it has any horizontal tangents and so on and so forth. Now, to differentiate a to the power something, you're just going to write the same thing and then multiply by the ln of the base. If the base is e, automatically that turns into a 1, which you don't have to write. But in this case, it's 4, so we have to multiply by ln 4 as a correcting factor. And then you multiply by the derivative of the inside by chain rule, which is the derivative of x, but that's just 1, so don't worry about it. But this, that's the, gonna come up here because one over x, when you differentiate it, it's gonna be different from one. So again, the same thing, you write the same exponential expression, multiply by ln of the base, and then multiply by the derivative of one over x, which is again, by chain rule, the derivative of the inside. The derivative of one over x is something that you should memorize. It's a negative one over x squared. But if you forget it, you can always write one over x as x to the power negative one, and then use the power rule. Okay, so no big deal. Set the derivative equal to zero, and notice that I can basically cancel out ln4 because ln4 is not zero. We can take it out and just totally forget about it. So we can kind of write this as ln4. Let's keep it outside because it's still the f prime. But we get from here 4 to the power x minus, that's going to bring a minus sign, 4 to the power 1 over x divided by x squared. And when you set it equal to zero, you kind of have to think about another exponential equation, which you have to worry about. But it, if you make a common denominator, and you're going to get the following, 4 to the x times x squared is going to equal 4 to the power 1 over x. Of course, x should not be zero. And as you know, x cannot be zero anyways, right? So take a good look at this exponential equation, because you're going to have to guess the solution. <laughs> okay, how do we do that? Well, it should be kind of obvious because if x is equal to 1, then we're going to get 4 times 1 equals 4, which is true. So x equals 1 is actually a solution of this equation. Is that the only solution? That's a good question, something to think about. But here's one thing that is very important here, and that is if this function is going to increase or decrease for x values that are greater than 1. You can definitely make a table of values look at the behavior, but let me tell you something. Think about values that are greater than one. You can also replace, we know that x equals one is gonna give us a, a change in derivative sign, but if you kind of think about some values like x equals, what happens at x equals one, x equals two, so on and so forth, you're gonna realize, or if you graph it, I'm gonna show you a graph also at the end, you're, you're gonna realize that this function is actually increasing. So here's the deal. If x is greater than 1, then f of x is increasing, okay? So, if we can find a solution for x values that are greater than 1, then that should be a unique solution on that interval, right? Now think about it. 4 to the second power is 16, and 4 to the power 1 half in the real sense is going to be 2, and 16 plus 2 is equal to 18. Therefore, 4 to the x plus 4 to the 1 over x equals 18 has a solution at x equals 2, and x equals 2 happens to be greater than 1. So on that interval, we have a unique solution. But here's the idea. If, and because this equation is symmetrical because of the presence of x and 1 over x at the same time, if x equals x sub 0 is a solution, then 1 over x sub 0, another x value, is also a solution. 
So what does that mean? It just means that if x equals 2 satisfies this equation, x equals 1 half, which is the reciprocal, also satisfies it because 4 to the power 1 half plus 4 to the power 1 over 1 half is the same thing as 4 to the power 1 half plus 4 to the power 2, which is the same thing as 4 to the power 2 plus 4 to the power 1 half. You see how they switch around? That means 1 half is also a solution to this equation. So far, we got two solutions. And another thing to look at, obviously x equals 2 already found, is what happens if x is less than 1 or even x is less than 0. When you see the graph, it's, uh, things are going to make more sense. But if x is less than 0, you'll find out that there are no solutions, at least real solutions. Okay. Now, why is that happening? Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple limits here to kind of see how the function behaves. These are called and behaviors, by the way. So, for example, limit as x approaches negative infinity of 4 to the power x plus 4 to the power 1 over x. Let's go ahead and take a look at how it behaves at negative infinity. Now, as x approaches negative infinity, 4 to the power x is going to approach. Again, I'm not going to write it as an equal sign because I know some people are going to be really mad about it. But I'm just going to write approaches 4 to the power negative infinity plus 4 to the power 1 over negative infinity, but 1 over infinity always approaches 0, no matter what sign it has. And 4 to the power negative infinity approaches 1 over 4 to the power infinity, and 4 to the power infinity approaches infinity, so this approaches 0, because 1 over infinity approaches 0, so this is 0, this is 4 to the power 0, therefore our limit is actually going to be 1 as x approaches negative infinity, which means as our x values decrease and decrease and get super duper small or infinitely larger and larger, negatively larger, then uh, they're going to approach the horizontal line y equals 1. So they're, not, they're kind of bounded in that sense. But what happens around 0? That's another uh, interesting thing to look at. And um, we can look at 0 from either side, but if x approaches 0 from the left, let's go ahead and take a look at the negative side first. Then, here's what's going to happen. Uh, it doesn't matter whether x approaches 0 from the right or from the left, but when x approaches 0, this is going to approach. Again, I'm going to use the arrow, so that's not equal sign. 4 to the power 0, and 1 over 0, negative 0. So it means uh, you're approaching 0, but from the negative values. Uh, and that's going to be actually, 1 over 0 is going to approach infinity, but in this case, it's going to approach negative infinity. So this is going to approach 1 plus 4 to the power negative infinity. As you know, this approaches 0, so it's, this limit is also going to be 1. So what does that mean? We kind of have a function that approaches 1 here and approaches 1 at infinity. So it kind of has to you know, behave like, I don't know, maybe something like this or something like that, but it's going to appear uh, or live around y equals 1. Okay, and then let's go ahead and take a look at the graph so this makes much more sense because I'm kind of talking about some uh, stuff. Okay, here's what the graph looks like. Oh, obviously, there are two pieces, and remember what I said about the, the negative piece. Now, what happens as x approaches 0? So we have a value of 1. Now, x cannot be 0, so this should be an open dot, but notice that our function kind of goes down and then up, but it's always going to stay below the line y equals 1. So that means it's never going to approach 18, so there are no negative solutions. On the positive side, though, if x approaches 0 from the right, you notice, hopefully, that y is going to approach positive infinity. Therefore, these are the only solutions we have, x equals 2 and x equals 1 half. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.